Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So good to see all of you. Thank you all for hanging tough with us there. As you know, the devil's a liar. Who's with me? Yep. Give me a high five if you're with me on that one. He's a liar. And he's been at it all week. But let me tell you something. He don't bother me because greater is he that is in us, right, than he that is in the world. And so every battle, every battle, he is he is Lord of all. What did the Lord show me and tell me? I How many of you remember what the, uh, that picture that the Lord had shown me? I think I told you on the last tribe that I was in worship. I saw the Lord standing amongst us in worship. I felt this cadence under my feet of like war. And I couldn't, I, I saw it very clearly and I could feel it. And I saw the Lord standing with his hands raised and fists. And I thought it was funny because I'm like, worship, usually you're going like this, you know, with your hands open, but his hands were fists. And he said to me, I am mighty in battle. And I'm, I'm sometimes a little slow on the draw, but I knew, oh, we're coming up to a battle. So sure enough, we were, I'm wearing a little headband. You're going to see me with headbands because I had a skin cancer removed that was supposed to be very small, but got a little bit larger. It was a whole story. You can go onto my Facebook, our Facebook for a tribe and see the story there, but the Lord is good. He is always looking for your good. Always, always, always. Hannah was with me and uh, we had some really interesting, we had some very, very pleasant, amazing sent by God plastic surgeons at the end. And they even said, this is the most fun that we've had. We're really sorry for what happened to you, but this is the most fun that we've had in a really long time. And we were like, how weird is that? That here we are viewing things that some of you would not want to see. And yet we were laughing and having such a fun time. And it literally was, it was the joy of the Lord was totally our strength. And Hannah's like, mom, there were some things I just will never repeat. I'm all sorry about that. But boy, the Lord is so good. I want to say to you, I'm telling you all that to say, it can look really ugly and it can look really exposed and it can look really bloody and messy and chaotic. But let me just tell you, let me just tell you, the Lord, the King is in your field. He is in your field. He is walking with you. He is with you and he is mighty in battle in every situation. He is mighty in battle. He is mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty to provide, mighty to heal, mighty. He is mighty. And he is going to speak to us today about being in our field. We have just entered into the sixth month on the Hebraic calendar, the month of Elul. This is the month that uh, that uh, it, it's known to Jewish people that this is uh, this is a uh, kind of characteristic of the king living in his palace all year long. OK, in this time uh jews are jews have a phrase that describe this month it, it is what i just said the king is in the field and the meaning of this will be explained i believe as we as we process through these three meetings and basically the king lived in a palace protected by iron gates and guards okay and to have an audience with the king you had to make an appointment you had to learn protocol you had to dress correctly you had to come through many layers of security, okay, in the palace. And as you did so, you had to be careful. But each month, the king left his palace. Listen to me. He left his palace and he went out among the people and he set up a royal tent and he went in a field near a town and all who wanted to see him were welcomed. The announcement was made. The king is in the field. And so this day, this day we are declaring the king is in our field. God is ex especially accessible during this month. We've been hearing about manifest presence. We, he's been showing us about getting in his presence. And I pray that you are getting in his presence. It is in his presence that there is fullness of joy. He came to me while I was laying on the surgery table. And he said to me very clearly, I have put, they had to do, they, it's a, it was cancer. They have to like do passes and then go look under the microscope and then do it again. Marsha knows, Marsha was just there too. Bless the Lord. And so, but every time they say, oh, we had to do one more pass, one more pass, one more pass. Of course we prayed for one, but I knew, I knew the Lord told me, remember Kim, I'm mighty in battle. But as I was sitting there, he's, I saw him and he said, he pushed like this and he goes, I'm pushing back the borders. And I knew we're done. 
We had to do one more little thing and we were done. And, and it is significant of what's going on in your life, whatever it is. Monica's going to share about some things that have been going on in her life. It's almost kind of, we have, can we just laugh a little because it's just literally hilariously funny because the joy of the week, when you know you win, things can't get you the same. When you're unsure about if you're on the right side or doing the right thing, you get scared, right? But let me just tell you, there's no fear in knowing God, only the fear of the Lord. Praise his name. It says in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Though there be uh, rumors of a hurricane, come on, I'm adding that. We're not going to be afraid. We are not going to be afraid. In fact, I speak to that hurricane right now. I already did this on prayer, but I'm doing it again with all you. Speak with me. Against that hurricane, there will be no loss of life. There will be no destruction. I command you in the middle of the sea to come together and just desist and be gone. No coming in, in inland, no causing any ruckus in our land. We command you to be out to sea in the name of Jesus. Hillary out to see. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. It's his presence all the days of my life and gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him, to seek him. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent. This is what we're talking about. And set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. Come on. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. And I'm going to sing and make music to the Lord. The Lord is hearing your voice. He's saying, seek my face. And we say today, your face will I seek. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors and wait for the Lord. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Well, we are waiting on you, Lord. And if today it is your first time on Tribe, I didn't say this because I came in a little guns a blazing, but welcome. We're so glad that you're here. You came to the right place. This is a place where we are believing God for re, um, restoring and renewing. And this is a place where God gets to do all his work that we are 614 tribe is according to Isaiah 61, four, that we shall rebuild the ruined places and we will build up and we will raise up the foundations of all many generations behind us. We are the leaders of our tribe moving forward to see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how many of you, if it's your first time, put your name in the chat. How many of you have had kind of a, uh, a challenging week. It's been, I know everyone's going to be raising their hands because I just sense it in the spirit. So we want to tell you, you are not alone <laughs> and the Lord is in your field. He's in your field. So we're going to hear about that today. So, so many things going on as we put ourselves to hear the Lord today. So I just want to confirm a few things before Monica comes, comes on the microphone, but listen, we understand there's a battle. Okay. That's, that's done. So don't, you're not, being opposed. Nobody's picking on you. There's a battle. There's a battle in our nation. If you haven't seen it roaring lately, there's a battle in the, in the air. There's a battle in for our states, for our cities, for our neighborhoods, for our families, for our health, for our finances, for our peace, for every, come on, there's a battle. It is raging. And I know we've had a lot of things come out. I don't think we've seen it all, but let me just tell you the Lord, the King himself, is in your field. He is with you. So there's a battle. 
But let me tell you, you win. And I told this plastic surgeon, this was my phrase. I said, he said, I'm really sorry what happened to you, but I got to say, this really is good work. And I said, yeah, it's amazing. And I said, whatever's good for me, that's how it works. He goes, well, I'm sorry about all this. I'm like, oh, I know it looks bad, but whatever's good for me, that's what God's getting. And so whatever's good for you, he's bringing about, but it's going to look messy. It's going to look kind of daunting. It can look like people's literally shouting at you obscenities at you, uh, accusing you of things wrongly. It can look like a lot of ways, but he is in your field. And let me just tell you, he is turning it for your good. Amen. 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 Well, let's just declare the king is in our field. The king is in our field. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're so glad you're here. Praise the Lord. The king is in your field. I, I tell you, we're just coming out the gate hot today because you got to fight fire with fire, right? You got to fight fire with fire. When the enemy gets fiery, we need to get fiery. With the, we have the, the altar of God with the coals burning inside of us. The living coals, the spirit of the living God. So the fire gets turned up. Come on. Anyone's like, yeah, I need that fire. Today, your fire is about to get turned up. I got to tell you this, Kim doesn't know this. My my week, I, I'll only share a few things. If I were to tell you everything, it would just be inappropriate. Um, <laughs> but she doesn't know this because I have not I told her like yet. We didn't have time or nor did I go through it. Everything she just told you is everything I was about to say. You're going to see that in a minute. It's okay. It's perfect. But my point, no, be, that this is good because- Literally, I'm like, okay. I even text her. I'm like, two I'm witnesses. going through that. You see the yeah, two, witnesses. two witnesses. That's right. <laughs> Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be confirmed. I'm not quoting you a scripture right now. I am informing you of a present reality, a present truth happening for you right now. And she, Kim, maybe you know these things that we have not had time to talk about these kinds of things. We've had other things going on. Uh, and I'm what I did know is. The Lord brought us together two days ago. We entered into the month of Elul with all that she just shared. We just entered in. And I want to say this. I'm going to talk to you and what she's talking to you about, about this season. Make no mistake that I, what we're not saying is, oh, because this date, this is what happens. No, because of Jesus, everything is available to us. And God uses his word times and seasons to help us connect with truths that are available to us from 2000 years ago. So just you catching what I'm saying? Because I felt the prompting of the Lord to make sure that no one would misunderstand that when we come and talk about, oh, it's this time and that time, like, oh, like it's only available now. No, it was always available to you, but you could not see it because you had not heard it. How can one believe unless they have heard, right? Isn't that what the Bible says? And how can one hear unless someone is sent to them? Same with salvation. You got born again when you heard the message and reality came, right? And salvation became yours when? When you what? Believed in your heart, confessed with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you shall be saved, right? It happened right there. But it became available to everyone 2,000 years ago. Are you hearing me about this? I need you to have this context because lest the enemy or others try to trick us with deception and oh well you know why do you believe the prophetic because like oh like they know when things are happening no we know everything has already been finished from the foundations of time and you know that too it is finished jesus paid it all and he did it all the problem that we have is we have to move into from faith to faith and glory to glory like we're learning oh i found out jesus died for me i can accept christ and become i receive salvation oh i i realize about healing you know the promises begin to be inherited do you understand it's the same concept of you know when we talked about the children of israel said that they would take their inheritance little by little you ever wonder why and it says there it says you know less the it, the you know you be overrun or the beasts of the field, like you, you can't take it all on in one moment. So it talked about when they physically took the land that they took one at a time, you know, they moved in greater and greater measure increasingly till they could take the whole thing. And this is how our walk in the kingdom is. 
You don't just get like born again and like, you know, understand everything and hold every. See, that's where people get discouraged. They think, oh, see, I got born again. I got saved. And, you know, but I still have. No, we are inheriting. We are taking the land. We're in. We've taken much of the land. All of us here have taken the, the part of the land of salvation at minimum. Most of us have taken many other areas of territory. We have entered into new territory. And I tell you today that the word of the Lord to you is that you are standing at the threshold of your next increase. You are standing at the threshold. You are at the threshold of your next increase. We're here and we've already stepped over. I see, oh, thank you, Jesus. See, the good news is she read some of the details. She showed us some things. And so we can read it, but I don't have to. I can just get on here and release the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. I'm not going to prophesy to you with mere words, but I'm telling you what the Bible says this in the book of Revelation. Kim, you're going to have to grab scriptures for them because I'm, they're just going to come. I mean, and or you guys can Google too, but I'm not going to worry about that. But the spirit of prophecy is on us this morning. He said to me, Monica, everything you've been dealing with, everything you're facing, everything that you're overcoming right now is so that you won't just prophesy with words speaking my words, although there is a time and place for that. And I am doing that in theory. I'm here prophesying with words, but that is not actually what's happening. Let me tell you what's actually happening. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And today I am here releasing the spirit of prophecy over you. I don't care if you don't understand the words. I am releasing to you the reality of the spirit of prophecy that comes in and transforms lives. Jesus paid it all. He died rose again so you can have it all and you are at the threshold of your next increase you have transcended you have ascended we have come to a new place and giants are showing up anyone have a giant show up in their life anyone have a new one anyone have a reoccurring giant anyone but me because i'm telling you this week i have been i i'm not gonna get into the details but let me just tell you i have i was verbally assaulted you would all be appalled if I told you what someone, a grown man, screaming obscenities at me, manifesting fully. I, that's just a little take. I'm just trying to help you see. Like, I'm talking about, but I'll tell you what, you know, of course. It's, it's not like, Charlie. It's not no. Her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why would anyone even think that? <laughs> Stop. A stranger. It's <laughs> like a nobody. Like, so, you know, you're like. No, I'm not going to, someone, you have no place in my world. You're not, you, I'm giving you context, but let me tell you, Goliath was the signal for David's moment. Do you hear me? Have you caught the signal? It took me a minute. I had to like realize what is happening. I am like being accused and assaulted and I, this is like crazy. What is happening? And it took me a minute, a couple days of like, okay, so what do I got to do, blah, blah. And then, boy, but I'll tell you, when you get into worship, because then I got in the presence, I began, and the Lord began to show me. It, the giant is a signal that it's a time to take your position, that you have been elevated, and it's time. And David, and I, I don't have that in here, because but Kim did the other ones. No, he's kidding. But, I, but I, I'm not reading it, but you guys know the story. You know that the giant, Goliath, the Philistine, who are we dealing with in the last series, Manifest Presence? The Philistines. Okay, Goliath. It says that he was taunting and harassing and they're hiding. And I had all these feelings. It was all coming. Come on, anyone been verbally, uh, even if, you know, or, or gossiped about. Maybe they're not even doing it to your face. Maybe it's, you know, rumors, accusations, lies, threats. Hey, we're all human. So I'm not saying we don't have things that we've actually done. But I'm talking about like crazy thought. And, and you feel like, what, what do I do? And all the, all the feeling, the devil is a liar. We will not cower. David came up and he, he's like bringing them lunch and watching all these battle hardened, uh, you know, soldiers hiding. And he's like, who is this uncircumcised giant? Who, what? <laughs> uncircumcised giant. Which actually, you know, I have to wonder, don't, this is not theological. This is just a thought here. Don't you quote me on, oh, well, Monica said, like, I don't know. But has anyone, we know what it means. We know that circumcision is a sign of the covenant, right? They have no covenant. It's like, you have no covenant. I have God. And so you're out here acting crazy, but you don't even have God and God, God is with me. So we know that. But forget that nice thing for a minute. Can I just point out that we know what circumcision means? Everyone here know what circumcision is? I wonder if it was also some kind of like, male insult 
we are talking about private parts here. I don't know. I just know it's a pretty uh, rough way to say something, you know, to the opponent, who is this uncircumcised giant? Come on, we need to look at our enemies, not the people, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And even I, I shared about this person that did this and <laughs> anyways, um, but boy, the Lord began to like, speak to me, like, mm, how far can I go? Let me tell you, I missed it. I'm going to confess that I missed something so big. And so I have already before the Lord repented, but I want to tell you, I missed something so big. In the neighborhood that I live in, I, we, we rent in a nice neighborhood in uh, Fullerton. And you guys know from here, we from here, we call it the embassy. From here, we do tribe. Come on. This is tribe headquarters, the embassy. And the satellite embassies of tribe are your, is right there. I see all of you. Let me get my screen right. Let me see my satellite. Let me see my satellite embassies. And, and no joke. And we can we'll have to post that picture. I don't have one in front of me and I'm talking to you now, but they know I have a, someone made it for me. I don't know if she's on here either. Uh, Denise made me something for my backyard that says, welcome, uh, the Stenberg, welcome to the Stenberg embassy. Okay. It's in my backyard, but I tell you, I'm looking now. I got my screen shifted and I see you. I see Jamie. I see your embassy. Come on. Hey, well, I see, I see Vegas embassies. Eileen, come on, put your, put your city in there in your state in the chat. If you're able, come on, where's my embassies at? We're the kingdom. We're the kingdom of the living God, and we're not alone. God has brought us together for such a time as this to use the technologies that we have available to us. And here we are. Here's this from this embassy. The word of the Lord goes out. And every night of the week from, from the embassy there in Whittier, Kim's on there in prayer with the embassy word coming out from her, from, from her place. Come on. We are who God said we are. And yeah, we have things. Come on, get it in there. I see it. I see your embassies. I see it. Oh, wow. Lord, thank you. I bless your embassies. And you, I'll tell you, I talked to, I don't know, it's my sister and someone else this morning. If you knew the warfare, I, can I just, okay, wait, let me back up. I'm all over the place. Good thing Kim read all those scriptures. Literally, Psalm 27 was the scripture. The whole passage is what I was going through. Kim, you did not know that. We have not talked about it did not know that, but that, but so let me back up. This is what I first, this is what I missed. God put us here. There's testimony behind that. And we're here until God puts us wherever he wants us. But I missed something this week. It was revealed to me. I missed that this is happening right here in this house. And we're doing this. And I, I have prayed for my neighbors all around here. You know, but I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I've prayed casually for my neighbors. You know, like, oh, Lord, you know, my neighbors. Lord bless them. Because honestly, the houses around here, they're, mine is not, but theirs are like, you know, a couple million dollar homes, like they're up the hill here. Like it's, and I missed it. Because I was looking, all, I've been here five years. And I realized, when was the last time I wept? And prayed and cried out. I have prayed for them, obviously. And even with you guys, you know, I'm like in my neighborhood, my thing. But I'm talking about being moved with compassion over the brokenness. Oh, I'll look at the homeless people. Oh, I'll, I'll drive down that street. I'll be like, oh, Lord, help them. Oh, Father, look at the brokenness. Because it's so apparent. But what about all them? I missed it. God says there is broken and bound and, and, and wrapped up. But you don't know it because they live in beautiful homes. And you're sitting right there. So I missed it. Now he wasn't rebuking me. I'm just saying all of a sudden this revelation came. I'm so sorry, Lord. I was put here. Doesn't mean I have to go talk to everyone and do all that, but I can release the kingdom for them. Like I'm praying for my sons, like I'm praying for you. But why am I not doing that? Come on, Lord, give us the heart of evangelism. Give us the heart of the prophet that cries out for the people around us that we don't even realize. We think they got it better than us because I mean, they got everything. Look at them. They got everything. You know, we're just here. We're just the renters you know, in the neighborhood. Like, look at that guy. You know? No, I'm being serious because someone in my neighborhood is who like completely manifested. And it was so all of a sudden, like, oh my God, this person who has a beautiful home and what appeared to me to be a beautiful family, money, car, all the things. And I just assumed they're good. 
I mean, I think I even assumed, you know, well, they're Christian. They probably already have Jesus. Like, and I've prayed for them, but I, I saw a manifestation of, and I realized, oh God, I, I missed it. I, these people need freedom. So I have recouped myself and God has shown me. And I know that my battle is not with flesh and blood, but I'll tell you what, I'm going for it in the spirit. I'm calling down heaven on these neighbors, on these beautiful homes where people are, are as bound as the attic. You guys know, I pray for the attic. You know how I am about the, all those things because these are things that people I know. And God's like, but what about, but what about them? But what about them? But what about the ones at the top of the hill that have the most beautiful home in this city that, that are so bound? Because if you don't have Jesus, you are doomed and you are susceptible to anything the enemy wants to do in your life. He's destroying stealing, killing, destroying. So the heart is to pray for them, to understand this is not personal. Because It's not personal because like, we don't know each other. Like you don't know me. It can't be personal. <laughs> you know I mean? It's different when it feels personal. Anyone got people who know you. And so it feels real personal. Family members been there. Some of you know, Jamie, you know, right? You know the things. All you guys, you know, it's like, I had to like get out from under the fire and the pressure of what was happening. It like stunned me to realize, oh, wait a minute. And the Lord said, no, 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 you will stand. And you've been under, you have dealt with this spirit before. It's the same spirit. And I realized it's like, oh, it's like whack-a-mole. I got you out over here. Bop, and, oh, you just showed up in this person. And bop, oh, you're going to show up in this person. Because people without the spirit of God inside of them are like a city without walls. And the enemy's like, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to use you to rise up against her. Because And so listen, the devil is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking he, whom he may devour and resist him steadfast in the faith. Okay, but we always, if you're like me, maybe I'm the only one who does this. Maybe, maybe I say everybody, but it's probably just me. I hear that verse and I'm thinking that's a warning for me to be careful about, you know, so I don't get devoured. Anybody else? And it is, right? But that's not it. It's everyone else. He's warming. He's my neighbor. My, the, the, the clerk at the store. The, the the richest person at the top of the hill and the, the poorest person hiding under a bridge who's in, in, in deep poverty and shame, you know, the, the prostitute, anyone and everything in between. The devil walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. On my land? On my land? We need to build some walls in the spirit for ourselves first come on for ourselves first so i'm not don't this group though i gotta tell you you have you know okay you know what you know for you and i know you struggle and you still feel some things but it is time it is time that we know not on my watch not in my city not in my neighborhood and i'm not telling you to go physically figure out how to fix it i'm telling you to call in the word of the lord to call forth the hurricane of the spirit I'll tell you what hurricane's coming. Jesus is coming. His spirit is coming. Whatsoever you allow is allowed. And whatsoever you disallow is disallowed. Father, help us. I'm telling you this whole, you guys know, those of we've been walking through this for some time, the worship piece, worship, worship. I'm telling you, it has been a gift to us this year. It is the only way. Let me tell you, it's what you got to do. Because in the midst of all this stuff, I mean, I'm like, anyways, I just, I don't even have a necklace on. I got, look at, I'm like, I got no, look at, I just realized that I got no earrings on. Like, I mean, I'm surprised. I, I, got, I'm, Charlie wasn't here this morning. He had to, I'll have a testimony on this. I don't want to share it today. In the midst of all of this stuff, we received a huge blessing. It's all happening in the midst. So I'm telling you, come on. Do you hear? The sound of Goliath. May it become music to your ears. Oh, I told Charlie last night after, again, this is after like at less than 24 hours ago, I had this like breaking moment. So this is what I want to tell you too. Don't, don't feel bad when you feel like we got to get our boundaries. I feel like I received something of a pressure like coal that gets pressurized until I become a diamond. And about 24 hours ago, what time is it? I don't know, five, about five o'clock last night. Finally, I, I right. <laughs> might be honest I'll be vulnerable here right before that I had this moment and I had been doing stuff like physical stuff I have like bruises on trying to like 
put they're putting camera i want cameras up like the things we talked about for a long time on our property like wait we need to if there were a lion roaming around on my property i wouldn't just let him roam even physically like we've talked about needing lighting we have a very dark area but this kind of stunned us into hey we should have cameras and things just so we know that so it forced us to do some things we should do. I was working on some of these things. Like anyone know, like I'm not the physical one. I mean, I can do some things, but I'm like the this and Charlie gets done. But I had to do these things and I have bruises, no jewelry. And he's not here this morning to even, we're running late because I ran late and then my computer acted up. All those things to keep us from the spirit of prophecy being released. I tell you this, the devil's not going to get to roam around. Last night, right before I got in the shower to uh, for the evening, I had this moment, I kind of just... It's not really like me to do this, but I just was like, I'm, I'm done. I don't have anything left emotionally, physically. It was hot. Of course, so hot. I'm trying to do all this stuff in the heat, you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fix this. And I said to Charlie, I said, hey, with tears, you know, I'm strong. I, I, but you know this and I know you know this, but right now I just don't have anything left. I don't know how to solve this. I don't know where to put this camera. I don't know how it should be. I can't figure it out. And I just felt the breaking inside and with tears. I'm like, so you need to be my cover in this. And I need to just let you be. I need you to figure it out. <laughs> and uh, no, okay. Kind of like a steam pot, right? A little, I think I needed to leak some of that pressure through in the, the week had been. So many things. And that wasn't the only thing. There was a lot of other things. Too. Like Again, Kim shared about what was happening with her. All this is happening at the same time while she's having this surgery and the things, you know, and, and, uh, oh, and I was getting two crowns. Hey, crown, double crowned this week. I mean, I know it's a thing. Anyways, I know it's like, yeah, but that does mean your teeth. I know I get it, but God took care of that too. And he prophesied. So let me tell you, when your authority comes, pressures come. Don't believe the lie that it means something different. This is what you have to get in the midst of it. So I go take a shower. Oh, started worshiping because that's where I, my shower is my worship spot. And I had such a breakthrough. Oh my gosh. Like we're talking in, in worship. I'm like, literally just had this moment. And then I'm in, wait, I just saw that. Look at Bruce. Look, this is, I'm telling you. This is my week. I'm have, I have laughing because I'm thinking, wow, I really did not pull it off today to get up in here. But I began to see what spirit was and the Lord revealed to me the spirit and how it had, uh, anyways, details are not important, but I had driven it out of this area five years ago when I came, not for myself, actually, for the people who lived here before me. That's how I came into this place. They were, you know, like it was the whole thing. And I didn't know, but I began to drive this spirit out. And so last night I was in the shower, the Lord's like, when the spirit is cast out of a house, he goes and he wanders in the dry places looking for rest, but finds none. And then he says to himself, I will return to the house from which I came. And he goes back and he finds that house clean and swept and empty, it says. And so he enters that house with seven more wicked than himself. And the last state of that man is worse than that. But this is the problem because when he came back to this house, he didn't find it clean, swept, and empty. He found it clean, swept, and full of the Holy Spirit. This place is not empty. And so in that moment, the Lord's like, and I really, I'm like, oh, I took authority, drove out that witchcraft spirit, that thing of that was living in this neighborhood before I got here. And I drove out five years ago, drove it back out. The burst of breakthrough that came. I'm, is this going to be too TMI? But I'll say it anyways, because these are the realities. I'm in the shower. I'm getting, I'm break, pushing this thing out in the name of Jesus. Oh, having such glorious breakthrough and rejoicing because it's clear to me what's really going on. And then I begin to call in for you guys. I'm like, and my tribe and their embassies. And I began to go at it for every one of you guys knowing God's like, oh yeah, come on. And he said, Monica, you're the tip of the spear. I know you were feeling this pressure, pushing through this veil, feeling this pressure, but you're the tip of the spear. Now push through and let your arrow come with you. Let them follow through. And so I just want you to know that about 5.30, 5 to 5.30 yesterday, your breakthrough came. I saw it. I felt it. My husband heard it. He's like, well, I go, listen. And I'm telling him, like, and the tribe, and we began to declare it over you and release all the things. Listen, he, the king is in the field. The king is in the field. 
and the month that we've entered into just speaks a word. It's it's we go to the scriptures, and when we have revelation of that word and faith comes, right, we begin to receive that. And so this is why knowing things or, or letting the Holy Spirit say, Hey, this is the season on the Hebrew. This is why, just so I want to bring this clarity. This is why I bring this stuff to you. I don't track all this stuff. The Holy Spirit brings it up and hey, oh, because why? Because the Holy Spirit, what? Said I would bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've taught you, right? That's what he does. So I'm giving context around this because I also know that, you know, different ministries do different things. And and so sometimes there could be this perception that, oh yeah, you know, I have a, a good friend. I love them. And this is not an insult. It's actually a compliment for years. He's my my good friend Joanne's husband would say my little Jewish friend. Well, I'm not Jewish, but because I always be like, oh, you know, and I'm you know always have okay. But I don't go looking for this. This is something that from very young, uh, I was just interested because when I began to read the Bible, I'm like, you know, it's all you know, they're all Hebrew. They're all you know, it's where we are. So why would I not care about all that stuff, right? That and I came up under Pastor Jack Hayford, uh, who that was part of how he you know revealed things. So it, with balance, like we're not trying to like Kim always says that like we're not trying to be Jewish we're not trying to say go do these things but see the word brings revelation and all these things have been written right all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable <laughs> that the man of God may be fully equipped for every good work and it's for reproof for correction all the things so we have the so as we step into this season now I'm gonna go back to where the month I feel like I might've opened up a couple other uh, trails and didn't finish them, but whatever, we'll get there. Um, let me go back to, so let me read just this. You can, you can look this stuff up. It's all, this is like the common information. This isn't like secret uh, knowledge that I hold because I'm so knowledgeable. This literally is like, okay, let me get a couple of things so I can run them down some basics on uh, the, what the, this is actually even not even from Christians. I just like, but Jewish people. So we have their perspective and then we have the spirit. So Elul, which is the month, by the way, that began uh, Wednesday night at sundown and, you know, began and moved through where now. So we're just a few days in. Elul is the Hebrew month that precedes the high holy days, which is going to be Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur up ahead. So it's, it's right before. Some say that the Hebrew letters that comprise the word Elul, E-L-U-L, by the way, for those who might wonder what how it's spelled, are these. Because uh, in Hebrew writing, it's four letters, okay? It's Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, okay? So those are the four letters that make this word. Some say that the four letters that comprise the Hebrew word Elul, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, are an acronym for this Hebrew sentence. Ani, la, dodi, vidodi, li, okay? A verse... From the Song of Songs, that means I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. So this whole month, the, the mindset is this is what it's about. The overriding theme, regardless of what it feels like, is I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Can you feel right now the, even like the shift I feel the shift. Come on. Do you feel the, the shift of the love and compassion and tender care, the mercy, the deep, intimate love that Jesus has for you? I feel it. It wash, you know, and I believe even as I broke in that moment and still my husband, I, I don't, I'm done. I'm tapped. <laughs> Which, by the way, he was probably like, oh, thank God. So she'll finally let me help. Like, I am not easy. Like, he's great. It's not that he wouldn't help. I don't let you, you know, because I am sure I know best, you know. But finally, I got to my, where I didn't have it. That weakness, that moment, that vulnerability. Come on, don't hide from those moments. You want those moments. We want to let our lover in. Can you handle that statement? I am my beloved, and he is, and my beloved is mine. That's what you, all right. Most often interpreted as a love poetry between two people, the phrase also reflects the love between God and the Jewish people. This is a Jewish website. So yes, it is the Jewish people and it's us, okay? Especially at this season, as we assess our actions and behaviors, during the past year and hope for blessings in the coming year. The reason that is, is because this is the, what's called the sixth month on the Hebrew. So 
in at the end of this month, the next month, Rosh Hashanah, the next month will begin and it will be the month of Tishri and that will be the new year for the on the Jewish calendar. Their number system will shift. It's like our January one. So that will happen in one month. So this is a time of reflecting. So it'd be like December reflecting back, you know, on the year. So again, so this is the season that they're walking in. Several customs during the month of Elul are designed to remind us of this season and help us prepare ourselves and our souls for the upcoming holidays, okay? And these are some, I'm gonna talk, this is what I want to talk about, the couple of things that are the customs. Now, I'm not saying we have to go do these things, but these customs have prophetic meaning to us and you may feel inclined to do something. In fact, you'll I'll tell you, but but don't feel that you have to. I'm not saying you do this. It's awakening us to to something and the season and the freshness. And he's trying to bring us to the next city to inherit to inherit. He's trying to bring you to the next boundary. Kim talked about uh, this hold and the warfare is mighty in battle. But then she talked about that the borders were, you know, he's reestablishing your borders. He's expanding your borders. Someone needs to write that down. Someone needs to say, y'all need to say it all. Come on. My borders are being expanded. My borders are expanded. And let me tell you, expanding is stretching and it don't feel good and it will come contested, but you have overcome the world. So that again, Goliath, come on. All of a sudden, I'm telling you, after that shower yesterday, oh, it was all that. I ran out of it. And I'm like, oh my God, Charlie, we missed it. Oh my God, we missed it. We just, we got, just got, that was the announcement of our upgrade. We stepped up. We, come on. David stepped into something. He didn't even realize. He just stepped into his destiny. And we read about it. And it's probably, I mean, it's got to be one of the most widely known stories, right? Goliath, David and Goliath. You know, it's a whole thing. Come on. You're in a moment like that. I, you know how I know. Listen, you're like, well, you know, I know because I'm the tip of the spear. I just pierced through. I'm just. You're all work together and we're just moving through. I felt the pressure, the spiritual, the physical, every area of my life. I felt it in my body, <laughs> scars to show it. I felt it in my spirit. I felt it in my mind. I felt it in every dimension of my being. I'm telling you, I physically felt it. But then it was, this breakthrough came and I felt the power like a, what is it like an atomic bomb? Like it explodes and reaches out and it came out for me and it came out and exploded into your world too. I know I was there, me and Jesus and Charlie, we saw what God did for you last night at 5 p.m. The announcement. Did I read any of these yet? No, okay, number one. one the customs, couple customs. Blowing the shafar. Blowing the shofar. Some of you, if you're on social media, you would see that my husband uh, the other night, I put up a post to him blowing it. I, yeah, listen, he's. I actually planned on him blowing it today because I literally cannot blow this. I got this in Israel on my first trip to Israel and it's been sitting up here and I can't, it's like, I don't have what it takes to blow this. I can blow in words, but I didn't have it. And so he bl was blowing it. So um, I'll give you like a fake. <laughs> you know, I can't, but it's, it's, it takes power to go through this. I'm telling you, I literally, wait, is that Deb? No, Veronica. Uh, Veronica, I don't know if yours would make the sound. Are you able to blow it? If you are, wait, can we get her sound? I want to hear the sound. I could probably do it. Hold on. I don't know if she's blowing. Veronica, can you hear me? You're muted. I would like to unmute you if you can make the, there we go. <laughs> it's muted again but thank you Thank you. That's not easy. And that's a big one. So uh, you guys have no idea what that's taking her to blow through there. I literally it, just, I'm not even going to try for you. We're just like, not going to do it. Like a mine's little. Thank you. I'm so glad that you had that there because listen to me. That is a prophetic sound. Now I'm not saying y'all need to go get one. You just heard the trumpet blast. Traditionally, the shofar is blown each morning of the, of a, of a lul. 
every day. This is not something that's normally done every day, except on Sabbath. From the first day of Elul until the day before Rosh Hashanah. So the whole month, every day, there will be a trumpet blast. In usually what how this works is it's done in the so currently Jewish people in the temples in their place of worship, they will there will be this sound uh every day. Every day. Its sound is intended to waken, awaken the soul and kick start and kickstart the spiritual accounting that happens throughout the month. In some congregations, the shofar is sounded at the opening of each Shabbat service during a little. Listen, it's time to awaken. Get ready for a spiritual accounting to be taking place every day. And don't let the taunt of the giant make you hide. Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And be of good courage. In this world, Jesus said this, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. So he promised us something. He made us a promise. Did you catch that that was a promise? I know we didn't hear that as a promise. We heard it as a like, oh, get ready. No, it was a promise. In this world, you're going to have trouble. We never like to claim it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Waiting for my promise of trouble. Lord, bring me my trouble. I, I don't know about you, but I have not done that ever once with that promise. But I sure got like, he will make me glorious and he will give me strength. Lord, bring me my strength. Lord, you'll provide all my needs. Wait, but where? Anyone in here? Is there anyone here that prayed for their promise of trouble? No. But it was a promise. And that's what I told Charlie. I said, oh my God, we missed it. Trouble tear. Trouble tear. Trouble came. And guess what that means? I'm about to overcome. Because he promised. Because he promised that trouble was a shofar blast of a spiritual accounting that overcoming is mine. I am an overcomer. In fact, I'm more than an overcomer. So not only am I going to overcome, I'm going to excel. I'm going to do. So this is an announcement of my acceleration, of my upgrade. And I tell you this, I just told you what's for me is for you. We're in this together. Not because you got to be because I need you to be or you need to be because it's just. To see God put us together somehow. We all got a story of how we're all in here together. And they they range. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me how they range. Woo! Come on. I declare to you that you will see more spiritual accounting. Your accountant, the king is in the field. Your accountant has come. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Wow. Jamie. I just realized, I know this has been years, so uh, how long ago, but you used to do accounting for the books. That was your job. That was what you did for your family. I'm not trying to give all your business, but, but that was your job for years. When back, I, I don't even know how my, Mike says, he, I can do this. Justin's 30. So that, yeah, you know, so anyways, decades, we go back. I tell you this, God says, I have seen the books over your life. I have, the books will not be cooked against you. I have made an accounting. God is coming to account for everything, guys. He has not forgotten. Nothing has been lost. Nothing has been stolen. It cannot happen because what God says will come to pass. Stay the course. Expect to cross the threshold. Do not lose faith. Do not lose heart. Do not lose confidence. It's okay to have moments of weakness. It's okay to cry. In fact, I'll tell you, do it and then come before him. What I said to Charlie, say it to him. I need you to cover me in this moment. I, I feel so weak and vulnerable and I don't know what you want. Come and cover me. And, and the spirit of the Lord is going to come. There's an, there's an accounting happening. Interesting because Kim, you would are the only one who would know that besides my family, but she gave a picture to my son last night. And it was that picture of Matthew, the tax collector. Anyways, we had this whole conversation about Samuel and numbers and accounting. There's an accounting that is here. He just turned 18. My son, Samuel, this is, these are all prophetic things that I'm just sharing. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So let me just tell you something. Many of you know the story uh, that I've told about, I wasn't having, I wasn't gonna have any more kids. 
but uh, the Lord, the Lord gave me a, after Sarah, we had three and uh, the Lord gave me a word one day out of the scripture. I was so excited. It was like, you will, it was the Ge Genesis, right? Abraham and Sarah, you will have a son. Remember she was barren and you're going to have a son. And so I'm reading this and I'm catching this prophetic sense that this was 18 years ago and it was or 19 years ago. And it's like the prophetic gift that's inside of you is going to come forth in your life. And man, I got this. And I was so encouraged by, and I knew he was saying your prophetic ministry is, uh, is going to come forth and be birthed. You will see it, you know, a year from now. Isn't that the phrase that he, that the angel of the Lord tells it for a year from now, he says to them, and then, you know, she laughs all that. That's not, you know, I just got excited and began to believe for this. And Lord, I do believe you and I'm going to just follow you. I don't care about what it looks like, but I believe what you're saying. And you have called me to hear you and to release your words and all this. Okay. Um, a couple of months later, I found out I was pregnant and it was like, I felt like, wait a minute. You said I was going to have a son. Oh my gosh. Like he tricked me to like, <laughs> I was to say, you got me to like believe and prophesy and speak this. You will have a son. And I'm quoting the scripture thinking it means my, that I would birth a ministry. But I physically got pregnant. I was, uh, let's see, how old am I? I don't know the math. 50, I'm, I think it was like 35. I already had a child with Down syndrome. Listen, don't listen. We all got ways we think. I already had a child with Down syndrome. I didn't plan on having more, you know, thinking, I, you know, I don't know, I got to take care of my daughter. I don't know what that will look like in life. You know, you're making all these wise decisions that you think are responsible and whatever. And, uh, but then, you know, but God's like, uh, no, you know, so I, I get pregnant and I knew I was like, oh, I was shocked. It was like, I'm pregnant. I'm 35. <laughs> like, what the heck? We didn't, you know? And so, uh, but praise the Lord, you know, well, that, that and, but we knew the Lord said his name, well, Samuel. His name will be Samuel. Now, Samuel is my grandfather's name. The house of Joseph, Joseph's, my father, Joseph, his father is Samuel. But that's not why, I mean, it sounds good, but that's not why I named him. I knew prophet, it was the Sam, the book of Samuel, the prophet, that that is where we got the name. And so we, so I got, I had him and uh, let me tell you what the Lord, two days ago on Elul, the first day of Elul this year, it doesn't always fall the same on our calendars just because the cycle. It fell on Samuel's birthday this year and he turned 18 years old. And I hear the Lord saying to me and to you, the, the prophetic words, the words I've spoken are in full maturity. Technically 18 is a, an adult, right? And the Lord's been whispering to me, I'm bringing them all into adulthood. I'm bringing your promises. The prophetic words that I've spoken to you are now in mature form. I want to bring them forth to be seen. I want these promises to no longer be seeds. We, we write the word of God. We take these, the word and we plant them in our heart as seeds. He tells us that it, we, the whole Mark four, right? So, and the word of God, and it's like in some on this soil, now they're, they're seeds that are going to start to grow. It's going to be a plant and then it's going to be right. And eventually it's a full grown tree producing fruit, but it starts as a seed. It's nothing but a, a seed that has to be protected under the, the soil and it, and all the things. And boy, that, that probably be, I'll probably be looking at that stuff. So I just love the, that how nature speaks and the germination, it has to go though. In fact, Jesus said, that unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, come on. I don't know what felt like death to you for the last 40 years. I know I was all like for the last, you know, year, uh, like 50 and anything in between 50 years, 40 years, but know this, it's coming into maturity and you're finally going to be able to eat of its fruit. You hear me? You are going to eat of its fruit. I don't care what you're like. Yeah, but that can't happen. Don't you tell my God why it, how it can happen. You have no idea. He spoke the universe into existence he made the human body which is like too much for me to even talk about like the intricacies of he created everything there's nothing too hard for him he says behold i am the god of all flesh is there anything too hard we have crossed a threshold I do believe it has to do with the, you know, like a timeline of Kronos time, chronological timeline and a Kairos time, like a special happening. We were born for such a time as this, like, <clears throat> don't even. Esther had to be, right? She, such a time that she was born, you know, he, what did Mordecai say to her? 
and I think we're going to get maybe get to some Esther, read Esther. We'll, we'll maybe get to some of that in the next week. She was born for such a thing. You, this moment, all the things. Listen, he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So if you are seeing trouble, rejoice. You're right on target. I, I tell you, it didn't feel like it felt crazy. I was stunned this week of the things that came, but God's already begun to break open some other things at the same time that I was like, oh, all these great things are happening. But this is taking all the energy because it's so crazy, overwhelming, like potentially dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, hey, pray for my protection. Like this got, you know, like, okay. But so that, but, oh, Jesus, don't let me be distracted by the lies and the threats of the enemy. We'll, go, we'll get into some of that. Okay. Blowing of the shofar. Number two. Saying special prayers. So this is what the Jews do. We, you know, this is not like we're doing some special prayers, but it's connecting with a theme, okay? There's penitent prayers. What did I just say about my neighborhood? Like, wow, I, I got it. The wait, I missed it. I didn't see the need. I didn't, you know, if 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 I, you know, like I said, when you see a physical, you're like, oh my God, they're so addicted. Like, oh, it's so, like, oh, you see, you know, oh my God, look what the devil's done to them, right? But you see people that look all together, you have no clue the deep brokenness and devastation. It's just what, because they have money? Like, um, but anybody else with me? Like, do you ever miss that? I totally miss it. I, and I didn't know the, how bad of a, like that was to miss it, but I began to repent as I just, my eyes were open to see, wow. And I'll tell you that it's not just with money, but I want to tell you that about spiritual things too. You may know people, you may assume like all these people at the church or this wherever in like their life, or they've like three generations, they've all been saved, their families all together, their marriage looks good. Listen, don't make the mistake that I made about my neighbors thinking it all looks good. Trust me when I tell you, we all need him so desperately, so desperately, every one of us. And we need to, we need to see the spirit of the living God we need to see the Ark of the Covenant make its way back into the people of God. We need to see the Spirit come back to the people of God. Not just, oh, I'm a Christian, but um, no, no, no. Listen, we need what just what we, in our last times together, and we saw that, 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 that the Lord had them, that they sent back the Ark, the presence. We need, come on, we need to begin to, to call forth the Spirit of the living God. Oh, I prophesy right now. Come and blow on these dry bones. I see the church of Jesus standing, and many are doing great. I'm not passing a judgment, but I see that there's some dry bones, but they're standing, and they're in the kingdom. But, Father, you're saying prophesy to the breath and tell it to come and blow on these. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And I prophesy even now, come and blow even now, Lord. Blow on not just my tribe, blow on the church of Jesus. Blow on every home and heart around me. Come and blow and fill your temple, every one of them, with glory. Don't let the enemy come and find their house clean and swept, but empty. Protect, oh God, all of the other believers. Come on. Our all, people we know, us, of course, but protect, oh God. We build walls. Oh, we're going to look at that today. I don't know. Maybe next week, Nehemiah building walls. Why? Because if you don't have walls, there can be an incursion. And people, you know, who know Jesus as Savior, but don't know him as Lord, they have no walls. And the enemy can come right in. You're like, I don't understand. Like, they're a believer, but they're full of anxiety, all this. And listen, they just, they need, Lord, build the walls. Let's build the walls for them. Let's be the Nehemiahs in the spirit. Let's pray for their protection, that they would have revelation, that they would move from sin and, 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 and change up how they deal in relationships. They would get better boundaries. Come on, anyone in here need to get some better boundaries with your work life, with your sleep life, with your eating life, with your ministry life, with your uh, self thinking, anyone besides me need to build some new walls. Literally, I literally, that's what I was doing when I said I was doing things. I have an area that's very exposed and that's where someone came and was like screaming at me into my own property. And so I built up a, a I'm like the Lord gave, all of a sudden I was like, oh, the Lord gave me the scripture, my sister in Song of Solomon. And I wasn't putting it together with the month we were in. And that, but he said, my sister, my spouse is a garden enclosed. And immediately I was like, hey, we can just build like a lattice thing here. It just will give us a little more, you know, just coverage. So we have privacy in our space and no one can come and do what just happened, which is insane. Who would, five years, why would I ever think someone, you know, I don't know, maybe someone will 
come into my private space and scream at me. I don't know, but it happens. So we built, we got to build some walls. We got to build them emotionally. Come on, we got to strengthen our emotions that when people act up and get crazy and accuse you or hate you or treat you wrong or ignore you or listen, it's don't, don't get personal. Like let's get in the spirit and know, hey, we need to be praying for people. It's not about that. All right, no one but me, but anyways, I love you guys. I, I hope this is all okay. I did think we were going to, uh, we are going to, I thought we were going to do Ruth all the way through this period. We will get to Ruth uh, next week because Ruth is another, by the way, another key uh, story that the in Hebrew culture, they read this story and there's some context that we'll talk about in the upcoming weeks about why, and, and but I'll tell you this. Okay. So another thing they do, <laughs> Kim did not, I don't think you knew this. Maybe you did, but we didn't talk about it. Um, one of their other uh, customs is reading Psalm 27. Kim, did you know that? Or did you just, I knew it. I was like, she don't know that this is on here. We didn't talk about this. And she's read you all of Psalm 27, which I thought I would do, but I don't need you. She did. And I get to just do this part. So I love how God will bring it. Literally reading Psalm 27. It is customary to read Psalm 27 each day from the beginning of Elul through Rosh Hashanah, which is the last day of Sukkot, which those are uh, in the next beginning of next month. We'll get to those. That's from four. Today begins a 40 day cycle. This isn't on here, but let me just give you some kind of, not today, excuse me. The first day of Elul, a couple of days ago, begins a 40 day period. So you have the month of Elul and then you have the Jewish New Year. So it's about approximately 30 days. Yeah, it is 30 days. Thank you, Lord. God's like, you know, math, come on. You're not an accountant, but we got accounting going on. Okay, 30 days. So this month has 30 days. 30 days will be the Jewish New Year. That's Rosh Hashanah. That day begins something that the Jews refer to. We'll talk about this up ahead. And I've talked about it in time, years past called the days of awe. 10 days. They, whatever, they, they do some things that prepare them for the, on the 10th day after that is Yom Kippur, which is the day of atonement, which is the one day a year where the high priest can go in and do sacrifice. Okay. So just to give you kind of, we've, we've stepped into a 40 day cycle, but I tell you, because Jesus died on the cross, our high priest has already gone in and sprinkled the blood in the mercy seat of heaven. Our, how we come into this is with victory. How we come into this is with fulfillment of what they could only hope for. The seeds that have been planted in you are ready to come forth into maturity. Samuel's 18 years old. My son's an adult. I On the morning, my people are my witness. I was on the phone with my oldest son, who's 31 or he's going to be 31. Um, and I said, Samuel's 18. It was the morning of, I said, he's 18. Can you believe it? He goes, I can't believe it. I said, I hate it. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I, how could we be here already? I said, I had to accept you and Jake grew up and you're already 30. You got married. I have grandkids. I love all that, but I still had kids. I still had babies. And now Samuel's 18 and he ain't going anywhere. He's here and all that. But you understand, I was feeling this. And my, Joseph, y'all have heard a lot about Joseph over the years. My baby's still, I said, Joe, you're my only minor. He's 15. But anyways, time for the fulfillment of the prophetic. In fact, the scripture, I, I posted it on my, I, it's those word that God gave me over Samuel when he was born. We put it like on his announcement and I posted it, I'm sure on social media is that, uh, and the Lord was with Samuel and, and, and he grew and, and he had favor. And it says, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. I declare to you today, none of the words of God have fallen to the ground. Don't you believe the lie for a minute that those seeds got put on stony ground or by the wayside, your seeds have been underground, germinating, dying under the soil. What are we made of? We made humans out of the dust of the earth ground. You are a garden. My sister, my spouse, a garden enclosed. Protected, though you feel exposed. Don't you believe that those seeds, you will see the fulfillment of every good word. It may not look the way you thought. You may think it was a prophetic ministry and you might have a son like I had. <laughs> but you guys hear me. I mean, my gosh, the God always knows better. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a, a child, two more. 
he was so good and wonderful. We're like, he's so awesome. He's so easy. And I was like, oh, and we had another one. Not that I totally planned it, but I was totally open. And Joey's here. I mean, my gosh, honestly, now I'm like, I wish I, we were teasing them. We're like, we've decided we're going to have more. Like toys are like, stop. I'm like, yeah, no, nope, we're, we're going to have to have more. I love, I love them. Thank you, God. Can someone thank God in, in advance that the promise is not going to look the way you thought, but it's going to be better than what you thought and you're going to love it. And you're going to be so glad that you let him be the architect and the designer of your life. But don't lose heart. Come on, you're here. I'll tell you why you're connected to me in this season. Because you got to live and you got to get these promises and God needs to have the reward for his suffering. Jesus will have the reward for his suffering. To say it out loud, declare it like it is reality. I don't say, I'm not saying it has to be loud, though it might be. Sometimes it's so just quiet and it says, Jesus will have his reward in me. And that's what I got this week. Jesus will have the reward of his suffering from my life. I don't know how he's going to get it done. I don't have the plan. And it feels like it is the opposite of all those things. But Jesus will have his reward. He did not send his son for nothing. He is well able to accomplish all that he has begun in us, even though it looks like, and think about the nation of Israel. It looks like they've been mowed down, plied down, you know, the temples burned. Last month on the Hebrew calendar was the comm commemorating of the walls of the temple. But I tell you this, let the old walls of your old temples fall to the ground and let God build you up a new house. Just like he said he would. Jesus said, tear this, tear this temple down and the Lord will build it up in three days. Jesus has done it all. Reading Psalm 27 and then in, uh, the lastly reflecting. It's also a month during which we are encouraged to take time to study and take time for personal reflection around our actions of the past year. See where we've missed the mark and make our way forward. And the other thing is then you've heard us say the king is in the field. The major theme, like Kim shared a little bit, is that kings were unapproachable. Kings lived in palaces and the average person couldn't get into the, you know, you didn't have an audience with the king, you know, ever probably. Uh, but they would carry authority and they could right wrongs and the things. And so, but see, Jesus in the spiritual realm, see, he changed it all. He tore the veil to give us access. We know that the Bible tells us, right, that he has, we can have boldness to enter into the throne room of grace, right? In times of need to obtain mercy, boldness. We come boldly because it's a whole different way and system. And, but, but in the ancient cultures, in this, at this time of the year, it would be like the barley harvest, which is what was happening in the times of Ruth, by the way, and we'll, like, we'll get there in the upcoming weeks. Um, when the barley, when the harvest would come, the king would come to the field. So they, she, she mentioned they'd set up like a, you know, a pa palace style tent and he would be more accessible and, and common folk would be able to have interaction with him. And maybe even in cases, it'd be like, you know, hey, this happened. And, you know, like sometimes people would get justice. It's a time of vindication. Oh, here we go. I know we're, we're wrapping this up here, but vindication, right? Yeah, I hope you're catching what God's saying to you. Vindication. There's so much happening. I, I will tell you, I'm in a bit of a, um, the word I would use is a, I don't really know the word I would use. I am a bit in a prophetic, like, moment where I'm a little like, whoa, connected up here. So I can feel it. it it's a season. It's a moment. It's a thing that happens, like an ecstasy of the spirit where the gift takes over. So it's not like I live like, oh, all the time. But I'm telling you, so I'm saying things to you. And I'm just trusting the Holy Spirit. It's a time of vindication. I'm not going to get into these details. But even as God was releasing that word to me the other day, I saw a report um, of a, a very well-known uh, mentor. I'll, I'll just say it because, you know, people want to, you know, many of you, and uh, this isn't up for subject or debate. This is just, I'm going to put this out there. Uh, Brian Houston of Hillsong. Some of you may have heard, I mean, over the, I don't know how long, it was just terrible accusations and assaulting of his character and saying just the most horrific things. And because there was a, a travesty that happened, a uh, criminal travesty that happened within his family line, his father, something many, many years ago. And, and over the last years, like documentaries were made and they tried to say he covered this up, all this, stuff. anyways, all this to say, it's been going on a long time. Yesterday, I think it was, was it yesterday or the day before? Alul was literally on the first Alul. Um, a judge finally like came forth and adjudicated this 
lawsuit and case and declared but the total opposite like <laughs> the facts of the matter are the opposite of what you know it's just with an assault and vindication came vindication publicly claimed that clarified everything that that yes something happened yes a terrible thing shameful thing that his father did but he even said but i am not my father like he had no part he knew nothing about it he was a kid himself when something happened and people said oh he knew no he didn't he was like 45 years 35 years old when he found out that something had happened. You know what I mean? So my point is, but that's not how it was reported. And for, I think, a year or two or maybe even more, it's been just under this slander that you knew, you know. And of course, no, you know, the mainstream media. And the, see, because the devil is out to slander. The accuser wants to make churches and Jesus look bad. It's not about Brian Houston. Although he's doing amazing, come on, influential kingdom stuff. So be careful. When you go, oh, you know, hey, look, we're, we're all human. You don't want your trash out there, but don't assume the worst. And just like, just because you make a make, does, mistake didn't make you that you did what the enemy would like for you to be people to think. Because he's trying to discredit the name of Jesus. It's not personal. I imagine, and I don't know him, so I'm not speaking into that, that that felt so in, t intensely personal to be like, like as if he had covered up like a sexual assault crime and was like, okay with that. Like he's a man of God, like, Oh my God, that, hmm. anyways, how personal, how painful, even though you know it's not true, but like this, okay. And even now that it's resolved, like that's that's a rough, come on. In this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And Jesus promised us persecutions. So I told Charlie, oh my God, wait a minute. We just got another promise. Persecutions. That means we're stepping up. It means we're moving in the right direction. It doesn't mean we're perfect. I'm not saying it means we, it just means like, hey, come on. Let it be the shofar sound. Let your enemies taunt be the sound of the shofar. He thinks he's talking smack to you and he needs to see that you respond by, oh, I hear it. I hear the sound of my next season. I, I got to step across this threshold because the enemy has showed up. The king is in the field and he's bringing vindication and justice. Justice is being served for you. Vindication is coming to you in your families, in your mind, in your body, in your finances. There's a spiritual accounting. Remember I said about the accounting. Come on, expect an accounting in your finances. A supernatural, miraculous accounting. God's, God's remember, he owns it all. He told us, he taught us what to do. And I'm not saying we've nailed it every time, but you know what? He told us what to do. Lay not, don't lay up for yourself treasures on earth where they can get all broke into, and, but lay them up in heaven. So that's where your accounting comes from. He'll release it. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally. The king is in the field. And so we've begun this. We're going to meet for just a couple of weeks. We're going to meet two more after this. And honestly, I told him September's a little uh, iffy on our schedules. I don't know what after these two. We'll, we'll let the Lord tell us. It's possible that we'll just meet these next two weeks after this and take the rest of September off to October, but don't hold me to it because I'm like, I don't know. I don't see how I can do Saturdays, but uh, the high holidays are falling right in there. So I don't see, so I said, Lord, I'm not gonna worry about it. You'll tell me what to do. We'll figure that out. We'll let you guys know, but, but it, we just have some, we each have some things, but these next couple of weeks, oh, I got to learn. We're going to, we're going to close in prayer. I'm going to, oh. Not as bad as I thought, but I'm thirsty. Charlie's not here. I don't even have a drink. I'm like, Charlie, I need you. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back in this afternoon and hopefully I'll have something, to, some tea or water to drink before then. Can Thank you for that, Charlie. This was going on record for him. Okay. Today, I'm not sure, but I think I saw Marlene Dowell's. Yeah, okay, I see you now. It's hard, you know, you guys know I don't see everybody's, but I am, but... Uh, you just prompted me because it, it, I believe this word impacts you, it impacts me. Uh, oh, yeah, Brenda's here. Um, many of you remember, um, is it three years ago? Is it three or two? I, I still can't even believe that it's true. So, yeah, I can't even, it's three years ago. Um, we lost a loved one. We lost a loved one. Today is the marker of that day. Today is 
yeah, three years. Well, I wanted to say it can't be three years. It must be two. It must be one because it does not even feel real. Three years ago today, my beloved daughter-in-law, Brenda, my son, Justin, and Brenda lost, uh, lost to this world, but not lost forever, lost to our season here, uh, her mother. She passed, she got COVID and it was a rough time. We prayed a long time, a lot of things. Anyways, today is the market. Today is the three-year anniversary of her passing. Marlene already knows why I mentioned her. I know that Marlene lost her father. Uh, not today, but in that season, because I know because Kim and I were laying on the, on the, Kim, do you remember? We were laying on the concrete ground at night outside of a hospital because you were not allowed to go into hospitals. We were laying on the concrete grounds, separated. We weren't even, I wasn't even having contact with Kim because, you know, I have my family. She was far enough away and I and it was at night looking up at the building in the skies and praying for Marlene's dad. We prayed, we did all those things over at the hospital outside. We couldn't go in for Brenda's mom, Stella. And so this is a, I really didn't realize till yesterday I talked to them and then it prompted like, wow, this is the three year anniversary. But I know this, we're going to have, we're going to meet again. We're going to meet again and we're going to have all eternity with them to worship our King. It's, we mourn here but it's not the end for us because they too were a seed planted and they're now, yeah, they're now, they're the full grown tree. They're, <laughs> we're still here, but we'll get there. They're with Jesus and we'll join them in when our time comes, but nonetheless, it's tender. There's some, accounting that needs to happen there's been some pain and some disappointment some cost some seeds sown in prayer that we didn't see the fulfillment the way we thought but i tell you there will be an accounting and the lord is going to vindicate you he is going to bless you he is going to bring you out and into your wide place he's in your field he is in your field redeeming i can't wait to read uh ruth with you because boaz the redeemer came and they, there she was her whole life was destroyed. She had lost her husband. She's in a foreign land. All the, it's going to be such a beautiful story when we read it together. It, but the king, Boaz, was the head of that field. He came in and he redeemed her and brought her out. And she ultimately became the, is it the great-grandmother of David? King David's great-grandmother? I think it's the great-grandmother. Um, it's got to think through the, they had, she ended up having Obed. Obed had Jesse and Jesse had David. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then, by the way, down the line, Jesus comes from that line. I mean, hello. So you think all hope is lost. And God says, I have a good redemption plan for you. I have a kinsman redeemer for you. And his name is Jesus. And these things are going to start manifesting in the physical. We'll talk more about this next week. But I want to say this. I want to set you up to begin to bring these things before the Lord. Let the Lord bring these things back to life, these dry bones, these dead things, these promises that are in the ground that you, they're dead, they're gone. Like you can't be fixed. This promise about that. I mean, you know, like your child there. <laughs> hey, I'll give you a warning. Be careful. Some of y'all just may have a baby. You're like, wait, I have, to, I said the other <laughs> Jamie, I saw your page. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Linda, let's laugh. Don't laugh, Sarah, laugh. Wait, you... <laughs> Linda, don't laugh too hard. Carol's all, I'm keeping a smile, but a straight face. <laughs> like everything. Listen, God has plans for us. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. Plans for a future and a hope. I think the NIV says, not you know, plans for uh, welfare and not disaster. I declare that disaster lies a lie. Disaster will not come near us. No evil will befall us. Our king is in the field. He is with us. He is for us. And our time of love has come. And I promise I'm going to end with this. 
I feel like I keep looking down going, oh, that wasn't as long I'm doing. I mean, I'm going to close, but I keep feeling like it must be after 12. I feel like, because I feel like I'm just throwing all kinds of stuff at you. <laughs> it's bubbling out of me. And you know what? That's another promise. He said that, oh, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. I am flooding your land. You may, um, listen, you think I'm just talking to you, but I am sending a deluge of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of the living God and the truth and the breath of God all over your land till it floods and destroys everything the enemy has built, destroys it and re rewrites the very terrain of your life that God would be glorified. Father, we don't want a safe, easy Christianity. Some of you are like, wait, I didn't agree. Hey, <laughs> You no way you are not. We can't. It's not an option, anyways. Devil's a liar. It don't exist. We need to have radical lives. We need to see the miraculous. We need to be. Uh, he said, "You don't need to see the miraculous. You are the miraculous. You are my seed planted. You were planted in your family. You were planted in this timeline. You were planted in your neighborhood, and you're gonna be moved into other areas because you are the house of Joseph. You are a great people with great power." And you will not just inherit one, but you have a double portion. You're going to take those mountains. Come on, that hill place. Though it is wooded, you will mow it down. Though those Canaanites are in your way, you will thresh that ground. Because he says, I have made you a threshing instrument with sharp teeth. Interesting, I got two new crowns this week. It's too bad I needed them, but praise the Lord. And when I was in the chair, Kim, I was in the chair getting the 10 day, well, the 10 day, 10, whatever, two weeks ago, Monday of the August 7th, I was there and she's, text, I said, I cannot believe I'm in here getting like crown work done. Like they're doing the, all the things. Always the Lord has things to say to me while I'm there. Like keep your tongue out of the way. When you're getting crowned, when you're getting leveled up in authority, you got to get that tongue out of the way a lot, right? You got to keep it away from where they're working. You got to keep your tongue out of the way. Be careful what you're saying. Speak those things that are true. Speak those things that are full of faith. Speak them if they say, look the opposite. Declare those things that are before. Come on. Declare the things that are not as if they are. The word of God teaches us this. Get that tongue in order. It's hard. I know. I know it's okay to say, uh, like I said to Charlie, I, I can't, I'm done. I can't do this. I need you to cover me. So say that, but I'm weak. I'm let the weak say I'm strong. Oh, I need to get up under your cover. So, come on, get that tongue out of the way. Don't, don't speak. Oh, look at this. Oh, he always stop. I could be like the person I said that attack me. Oh my God. If I were to tell you, and so I could say all kinds of, he's a city without walls. He's broken down in it. Obviously the devil's able to get into you and make you act crazy. Like, wow, that is sad. Lord help this man. Redeem his family, restore him, bless them. This is why the Lord says, bless those who persecute you. Because he understands the kingdom. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They don't know they're being used to attack the people of God. They don't like Goliath had no clue what he was getting into. <laughs> David's like, who is this uncircumcised giant? Sling those stones, guys. Sling those smooth stones of worship. Word, the word of God. All right, I know I'm keep saying it. Let me close with reading you this out of Song of Solomon. I'm gonna pop around. I'm in Song of Solomon. It's not gonna be in order because I just want to get a couple of these verses in because I couldn't believe it. Again, remember, I am my beloved and he is mine. This is that whole month. And the Lord then closed. I'm building lattices at, when it's maybe all done. I'll send, I'll put pictures. Um, because it looks great. I'm like, oh my God, I love this. I wish I would have, you know, done it. I didn't. Yeah, I did it for like this reason, but the truth is it's hello. It's for my good. Like Kim said, this thing that she had to have done. I told her the other day, I'm like, I am sorry. She's already told you all her business. I'm just gonna say, I'm like, Kim, I know this is that. I said, but I think you got like an eye lift because they had to pull the, literally. So like, I'm like, okay, so it's terrible that you had to go through this, but literally you're coming out of this like a little, seriously, I was I not over there telling you like, I'm like, wait, I think I need your, Hello. What the enemy means for evil will be for all your good, even things, little things that you would think, well, that's superficial. Okay. Mm, right. Did y'all brush your hair today? Like, come on. It's okay to want, 
I'm not saying we should be obsessed with things, but let God, let God lavish you. All right, Song of Solomon. All right, Lord, where, which ones are okay? It's all so good. You should read Song of Solomon from the perspective. <laughs> I've given you lots of reading work. Yeah, hear him this week. Let him speak to you. But let me just throw um, so much good. While the king, okay, I should tell you, Song of Solomon one. I'm going to read something and I'm going to probably pop around. I'm going to start at 12 because why not? While the king is at his table, my spike in art sends forth its fragrance. A bundle of myrrh is my beloved to me that lies <laughs> all night between my breasts. Okay, I didn't see that comment. <laughs> just, like, just keep going, but whatever. <laughs> but let me say this. I love you, Lord. You're so funny. He's like, don't be all weird. It's okay. What do breasts represent? Not what we in our culture represent. Sustenance. Provision. Feeding our young. You see why the enemy likes to pervert our culture and make it so oh, we don't want to talk about that? Like, no, come on. He's bringing our provision. He's right there making our provision good, not just for ourselves, but so we can feed our young. Anyone need to feed your young, your, your physical and spiritual and everywhere around you. Let me tell you, if you don't know, you need to be a mother to many. We're going to get into that with Ruth and Naomi. All right. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blooms in the vineyards of En Gedi. Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes. Okay, listen. Look at this. We'll go to 2-4. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with cakes of raisins. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. Listen, we need to be refreshed. We need to be encouraged. He's saying, I'm going to bring you in. Come into my presence. This is that whole worship thing. We've been talking about this. He's trying to get us in. It's not to get us out. He's not trying to give us jobs to do. He's trying to bring us into the banqueting table where his banner over you is love, and you will be encouraged, and you will be refreshed. Refreshing is here, and it is found in the presence of Jesus. His banner was me with love. Sustain me with the cakes of raisins. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases the voice of my beloved. Behold, he comes leafy, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. Come on, he's coming up over your difficulties. He's coming up, he's coming, he's entering. He's coming to rescue you. Skipping over the mountains are like obstacles you cannot seem to climb or the difficulty. And he said, I summon a skip and leap right on over into your moment. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He is looking through the windows, gazing through the lattice. He's looking into your life. You guys don't even know. For me, I read this not knowing. I just put five things of lattice up. I have bruises all over because I was putting lattice up. I did not connect this literally till this morning when I was on the phone with someone. She's like, I told her something about what they said in the scripture. She goes, wait a minute. And she reads it. She goes, it says lattice. I'm like, no, just stop now, Lord. My life is a prophetic picture of God's restoration. It will remain a prophetic picture of God's restoration. The people of Israel are a prophetic picture of God's faithfulness. And you may say, well, what about the Holocaust? I'll say, yeah, terrible things. In this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer forever. In the end, it will speak. Listen, I have been through and I have done crazy things. My life has not been pretty in the church world, in the cleanup world, what you think. But God is a redeemer. God is a restorer. And my life is a story. Your life is a story. You are are a walking epistle. Jesus is Lord. The whole world is the field. The king is in the field. The whole world is a field and he paid for the field. And he's coming into his field and he wants you, but he also wants everyone around us. He wants to harvest the field. Oh Lord, we're gonna, we gotta save that for I guess next week. But do you understand what's happening? The barley harvest is here. He wants to harvest the world. He wants to come for his harvest. He's in his field and you are a part of this. You are his beloved. Okay, 10. This is where I guess I'm gonna have to find a place to end it for now, but this is gonna, this is where we'll go. Verse 10. My beloved spoke to me and said to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter has passed. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. 
The time of singing has come. Sing, O barren. Sing, O barren, you who have not brought forth in those areas, for more will be the children of the desolate than she of the married. I declare to you, every one of you who have desolate places, you feel so desolate, I declare to you, it is the time for singing. Sing, O barren, sing. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land who remembers the doves that were I've, i showed you were coming and roosting on my area here I, while i talk to you you guys probably can't hear it but my window here is open and and there's a um, bunch of trees and stuff over here and all i can hear is the, the doves cooing because there's a nest in there or something the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land from this embassy of which you are all satellite embassies we're all connected embassies in our areas, just like that's what an embassy does, as you know, the turtle dove has been heard. The fig tree, which I have, by the way, oddly, <laughs> on the, this side of the house is a fig tree. And the fig tree puts forth her green figs. And the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. And of course, this, oh, oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face. Listen, he's saying that to you. I know we say, let me see your face, and we ought, but I'm telling you, he's saying, come away with me. Come to the secret place. Come meet with me in the cleft of the rock where it's rocky. The terrain is tough. It's dry. It's not like a garden. Come and let me see your face. Present yourself before me. Come to me. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet. And your face is lovely. And yes, this is true of him, but I hear him saying to you. Your voice is sweet to me. Talk to me. Come to me. Tell me. Like I said to Charlie, I felt so foolish while looking at Charlie. I don't have to. It's my husband. But I'm like, I, I don't. I'm done. I have nothing. I need you to. I'm just not used to being that way in the natural <laughs> all the time, maybe. And Jesus is saying, come to me. It's sweet to me when you come to me. Show me your crying face. Don't hide it. Your face is lovely. He, he's calling you to the intimacy. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My, and this is now the, the, the bride. This is how, my beloved is mine, and I am his. He feeds his flock among the lilies. He's calling us in the season of Elul. The time where the king is in the field and the very name of the month has this connotation in the, from the Hebrew, by the way, who they wrote the stuff. I don't care what our Christian thinking is. We think we don't need this stuff. Like we need to know more. We need to have understanding. We need to hear the voice of the beloved. We need to learn more. We need to have revelation. God is bringing us into the deeper places saying this again, it's not just available to us now. It's because of the cross has been available, but for whatever reason, where we are on the timeline of our life, where, where our hearts are, what we've grown into, our, he's brought us together to invite us in. So Father, I thank you. On this day that is filled with even the remembrance of the loss, the Stella's passing on this day, it's a tender day. It's a painful day. It's a painful reminder of painful times, but you are with us and you are real and you are true. And, and death has no sting other than our own missing here because you are real. And our loved ones that knew you are with you and we will join them and the heavenly host in casting down our crowns and saying, holy, holy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. You are worthy, O oh God. You're worthy in the midst of the storm. You are true. And every man is a liar. Any other voice is a lie. Any voice that's against or, or stands, 
against what God has said is a lie. We must cast down imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. This week, you catch those foxes, those imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Thoughts of all oh, never this or this all whatever. I don't know what it is. The Holy Spirit, you know what they are. And you're going to you're going to know this week. This week, we're going to catch foxes. We're going to catch foxes this week. Thoughts, situations that are imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. I, I don't have that scripture reference, but you guys can find it. Oh, yeah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Things present. Listen, but I'll tell you what. Jesus is saying, nothing can stand against me. If I'm for you, who can stand against you? Nothing. Neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor demons, nor things present, nor things to come can separate you from the love of God. You will not be separated from him or his promises. You're not going to reap around the corners of the field like forever. We'll talk more about that with Ruth. Come on. You're going to be brought in. You are. You have been. Thank you. The Holy Spirit said, no, we're, we're long past going to be. We have crossed the threshold into our inheritance that he told us was coming. House of Joseph, people of God, it's time. So I love you guys. I bless you. At twice this week, I thought, why did I say I would do tribe this week? Like all the stuff that was happening, like I am in no condition to see that. But of course, the Lord's like, oh no, you'll, but before that time arrives, we'll be having our, you'll be presenting your face before me and we will fix all of it. I will give you a new perspective. You're going to get a new perspective shift this week. And we're going to continue to push through. We're fighting for you. Listen, as I fight for me, the devil pushed me into a corner and he got screwed. Don't you push. He pushed too far. Push so far. I can say screwed. She gave me a funny look. But he pushed me too far into the corner. So I had to come back fighting. But I didn't just come. I'm not just going to take back what's mine. I'm going to take a toll. And so I began to take it for you guys. And you're taking it for one another. We are in this together. Okay, I know I said I'm going to go, but I three times this week thought of this and I almost made the call, but with everything I couldn't. Susan, um, your neighbor, you've had neighbor issues. I know about, yep. I want you to know that three times this week, I realized that when you were sharing them with me, and I, I prayed with you and we did all the things that I did not at all have context of what you were feeling. The emotional the pressure that just the spiritual context of all until this week when I had a similar situation, not, not exactly the same, but, and I want to tell you, first of all, um, I'm sorry that I didn't, I mean, I know you were like, what I prayed with you. We talked all that, but I want to say, I did not feel what you were feeling. And I got a taste of it this week. And I realized, Oh my God. So many times this week we prayed for you and, and I prayed for you knowing with detail, Lord, oh my gosh, this is what she was feeling. And it's a spiritual thing. It's not just what people do. It's a spiritual thing. And so we pushed back that and we're on it with you. And I love you. And I know it was hard and it still may be, but it's the Lord is with you and he's with each of you. So I want you to know that too, because I was like, oh, I need to call her, but there was just, it, I couldn't, it's been crazy. But here I am to publicly vindicate you. It's not personal. You've been planted there. And the devil wants you out. You are a problem. All of you are a problem for the enemy. Wherever you live, whatever family you're in, wherever you work, so many places, you are a problem for the enemy. And he wants to keep you shut down and actually wants you to leave. He wants you to uh, abdicate your throne. Do not abdicate your throne. You can't. It's his throne. You're just sitting in it with Jesus. Do, you don't get to abdicate the throne of Jesus. Stay the course. I love you guys. Okay, just as a wrap up here, just a few, th two things. I think I said it at the beginning, which was number one, there's a battle. And she said this, let your enemy's taunt be the sound of vindication. So there you go. It's admonishing and admitting that this is what's happening. But 
let it be that taunting that could try to come. Let it be your sound of vindication, like the shofar blowing during this month that we're remembering that he's in our field. He's always in our field, but remembering that, like she said. And then number two, he, the king is in the field, like that beautiful calling from Song of Solomon. Come to me. I want to hear you, even in your frustration or your uh, disappointment or being done, like Monica said, you know, experiencing all the things that she experienced this week, you know, in regards to it as a, a parallel to all, all of us in tribe pushing through, but come to me. I want to hear you. I want to see your face. He wants to see your face. Even if it's just for a few moments, he wants to see your face. He wants to hear your voice, your words, calling out, crying out to him. And she read from Jeremiah 29, 11. I looked up the message version. It says this, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up and not a day before, he's talking about the battle, I'll show up and I'll take care of you just as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. I have plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I am listening. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. I love this part too. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. This is God's decree. Praise the Lord. We'll keep looking at that. That's a really awesome um, call from his heart to us, standing at the lattice, calling to us. Come on. I want to, I want to, I'm peering at you. I'm gazing at you. So the Lord is good. We are so thankful for this day, for all of you. Bless all of you. I pray that as you continue through this weekend in your house churches, wherever the Lord has called you to worship, that you'll worship, that you'll praise his name, that you'll give honor to him, that you'll you'll see him and invite him into your field and let him be part of all the everyday things that he's doing. Because listen, it might look a little crazy right now, but all that's good is coming to you. Amen. Well, we will see you next Saturday. If you want to join us on prayer, we're on our Facebook 614 tribe and we pray in, on the weeknights uh, over all these things and over all of you. Love you all so much. Hey, I forgot. And um, just FYI, we mentioned it. Our Israel trip. I'm like, I forgot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that. <laughs> FYI, uh, if you, for more information, what is it? Uh, MadisonTravel.com slash Stenberg. We put the link out. It's in emails. Yes. I just reminder, we're going April 30th, 11 days. We'll be there in 2024. It's yeah. And somebody awkward. did ask me about like, when's the, uh, when's the deadline. And I just said, Hey, go ahead and just register. And then there's a small deposit. You don't have to put down all of it. There's a deposit that you have to put down, but if you would all know, put it in, ask yeah. the Lord to, to give you the, to continue to bring provision in and we'll see how yeah. he's going to do it. So don't miss out on that. We'll give you, we'll be making a little, yeah, I meant to do more. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> kind of busy with the things, you know, and the building. <laughs> okay. Love you all. Have a great weekend. We love you. We'll see you again. And don't forget in every situation, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Love you all. Have a great weekend.